No pads or gloves were worn, so noses would break, teeth would fly, and the floors would often end up soaked in blood. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. I feel it's time to bring you another profile of a prolific karate master. So let's go for one of the most influential high-ranking Wadoryu masters. Hanshi Suzuki Tatsuo. As usual, my main sources can be found in the description, but let me first tell you it's hard not to be biased when objective sources are scarce. Professor Suzuki was a Japanese master who was one of the main agents in the spreading of Wadoryu throughout Europe and the United States. He was born in 1928 in Yokohama and had a great interest in Kendo and Judo as a child. His father was a fun-loving man who owned a successful restaurant that offered food and entertainment to the rich and famous until the war ended this. Everything became militaristic and teachers were looked upon as gods, almost like the samurai and their lords. The young Suzuki desperately wanted to become a soldier and was raised with the Bushido code. To die for his emperor and country was the highest honor. He was too young though, so the teenage Tatsuo had no other choice but to turn to martial arts instead. By the time he was 14, he started studying karate and he would become a lifelong karate student. When the war was over, Suzuki started working at an American army base as a cleaner. There, he found out that the Americans weren't the monsters he was told to believe. He decided to learn English at the local YMCA, but when he found out they also taught karate there, he forgot about the English and just wanted to learn karate. He was taught by Mr. Kimura, one of Otsuka's best students and very quickly began to devote most of his waking hours training karate. He would end every year by going up to a temple in the mountains to train from dawn till dusk, stopping only for one small meal a day. His training day would start with a run, followed with a little meditation, and after this he would work on his kicks. Then three hours of sparring with his fellow students and finally kata. He would perform each kata three times. He received instructions directly from the then almost 55 year old Wadoryu founder Otsuka Hironori at the Wadoryu headquarters in Tokyo. He would train together with the master and fighting was extremely hard as many of the senior black belts had returned from the war. Back then fighting was different. There were no rules. Any technique was allowed. Kicks to the groin, strikes to the eyes or throat and so on. Contests would be held against students from different styles and back then it was easier to tell the differences between the various styles. So uh, Shotokan fighters fought stiffly, requiring much room. Goju fighters, they liked to get in close. And Wadoryu fighters were somewhere in between. No pads or gloves were worn, so noses would break, teeth would fly and the floors would often end up soaked in blood. Eventually the heads of the styles uh, got together to devise rules, not for the safety of the fighters, but rather to prevent potential new students to be scared off. He reached third dan in 1948 and was awarded a fifth dan three years later in 1951. Now this was the highest grade available in Wadoryu at the time. He was given this grade for his outstanding courage and ability. After his competition period, he traveled around with Otsuka and some other students, performing demonstrations and teaching all over Japan and also in Hawaii. In the early 60s, he was sent out by Otsuka to spread Wadoryu all around the world. He founded the first Wadoryu Federation in England and expanded this throughout Europe. He invited Japanese students and molded them into proper karate instructors before dispatching them all over Europe, which made Wadoryu one of the most popular styles. Now, I say one of the most popular styles, even though many of my sources say Wadari was the most popular style, but only the Sith deal in absolutes. Oh, now I have your attention. If you enjoy this video, then a sub to the channel and hitting that like button would be absolutely awesome. In the mid 70s, he received both an 8th Dan and the title Hanshi. In Wadoryu, only Otsuka himself held that title. He was also given a special silver cup by Higashi Kuni no Miya, the uncle of the late Emperor of Japan. In the early 90s, Suzuki took over from Otsuka Sensei. He made a very difficult decision out of loyalty for his teacher and formed a federation to safeguard the essence of Wadoryu. He called this the Wado International Karate Do Federation or WIKF. A large number of his senior students remained loyal and followed Suzuki in this decision. In addition to his considerable accomplishments in karate, Professor Suzuki also held a second dan in Tenshin Koryo Bojutsu 
and a first dan in judo. In addition, he studied Zen doctrine. He was a member of the International Budo Academy as an associate professor and was awarded the title of Doctor of Philosophy for his lifelong work and commitment to teaching Wadoryu Karate. In 2005, Master Suzuki suffered a heart attack, and even though his strong will allowed him to at least temporarily overcome this, he did start to restructure the Federation so it could continue on without him, should the inevitable happen. So in 2008, he appointed a World Technical Committee to ensure aligned and consistent standards, and the following year, Master Suzuki stepped down as the World Chief Instructor and appointed Sensei John Wicks. No, 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 not John Wick. Ah, there you go. So Sensei John Wicks would succeed Suzuki Sensei as World Chief Instructor in 2009. Although he was training and instructing karate right up until the end, Hanshi Suzuki succumbed to his illnesses in 2011. Before he died, he wrote a letter addressed to those students that continue to follow him. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you would like to read it. I would advise you to not get caught up too strictly in his claims that what he did was the only way and that others were wrong. Remember, Master Suzuki lived his life totally convinced that his way was the only correct way. You should also remember that Suzuki was a Japanese man born in a time when Japan was a highly militaristic country. And as I said before, teachers were looked upon as gods. Today things are different, but it's hard to remove certain ways of thinking completely. I'm not defending this, but I won't condemn it either. I would just say. Read the letter as a love letter to the art he dedicated his life to. He had been learning Wadoryu from the age of 14, taught by the founder of the style himself, and made it his mission to spread the style all over the world. By the time he wrote the letter, he had been studying it for almost 70 years. It's therefore only natural that he would be convinced only his way could be the right way. And who are we to argue with that? Suzuki's life goal had been to protect Wadoryu as he'd been taught by Otsuka himself. And his spirit lives on through the WIKF and the millions of karate students across the world who learned, trained and were influenced by one of the greatest martial artists of the 20th century, Grandmaster Suzuki Tatsuo. I feel intrigued when I learn about people who can dedicate their life to something they are passionate about. Even if it can get a little preachy, that's just a part of it. Of course, you can hardly learn about what Ryu without learning about Otsuka Sensei. So click here for his life story. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day. And as always, thanks for watching. When Chuck Norris writes a letter, he makes the paper bleed.